So, good morning again, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're back with Celio, and we will just retrack and revisit the G20 question because I did uh, throw Celio off with that little question because I didn't prep him, but it did uh, pop into my mind in the course of the conversation. So, to answer it adequately, we've now worked out what we need to do is to go back to the Commonwealth Games and then as the history rolls forward into the Expo because there will be a bit of a byplay um, as to how difficult it was to uh, convince some of these um, major countries that Brisbane and Queensland could actually put on and host a major world event and that then obviously then rolls into the G20 question. So, so Leo. Well, I think if we go back a little further, it's all related. Oh, yes. uh, back in the early 60s, for example, <clears throat> when we uh, first had put the spurs into the then more or less moribund Queensland economy, where we were really uh, a third world country at that time. Uh, and by the early 80s, we had the economy running very nicely and Brisbane being restored to well, not quite what it is today, but uh, it became a modern city. But now the, the rest of the world, as you, as you said, Peter, the rest of the world still saw Brisbane as some little town north of Sydney and Queensland was cows and coal, and that was it. They, wouldn't, they weren't interested in delving further to see what we were doing. And no matter how many uh, graphs and statistics we put to them, we had difficulty getting the point over. Now, that was very important to us too because we were doing a lot of our borrowing for our infrastructure from offshore, and we first of all, we more or less had to tell them where Queensland was. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, the Commonwealth Games in 82, and then Expo 88 really showed the world that we were not just cows and coal, we were a quite a sophisticated modern city and a modern city on the, on the up, on the moving forward. And I think uh, uh, from 88 to now, 25 years, uh, we've doubled, I don't know the numbers, we've more or less doubled our economic picture. And it's once again we should sh show the world just what we're about. And, and by no means are we cows and coal now. No, we're right. one of the fastest growing regions in the world and have been for a number of years. We're still increasing the rate of four and a half to five percent per annum. And we can get that over with another with another exposition to our G20 people which mm -hmm. scored. Yes, exactly right. And that's, that was really my, the intent behind the question is that we do have the 25th anniversary. We do have a great story to tell. And sometimes in celebration, um, you can use it as a leverage to present a better picture. And also then it will link into enabling the Brisbane Convention Centre, which is one of the world's best. There's no doubt about that. Yep. Um, and that, you know... Cultural it, Centre, the South Bank. Again, you know, Goma, one of the world's, yeah. world's best. Uh, and the, the, just the, think of the story behind the Integrity Bridge. I mean, that's world unique design, construction, yeah. nowhere else in the world uh, is there that. And, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that the Lord Mayor uh, has a look at the, uh, that, the sculpture called Paradigm, uh, which was first on Expo site and has been in storage, uh, which was a world first, world first computer controlled lighting, world first design sculpture. Um, and so Brisbane has just so many unique and great assets uh, to talk about. Um, and uh, so now, look, this series of interviews has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for taking the time. Can I give you one more anecdote? Yes, to frame what I mean about people overseas uh, in high places not spending the time to work out mm. the strengths of, of people like Queensland. Where's Queensland? I'll give you an anecdote that happened just in the last couple of years. We were in uh, New York talking to the insurance industry, the top line people in the insurance industry who were contributing or buying our bonds and whatever. And we had a function and at the function uh, where we, which we hosted, I was introduced as Sir Leo Hilcher, the chairman of the Queensland Treasury Corporation and from Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. And this gentleman, top line man in the insurance industry said, Brisbane, Queensland, is that anywhere near B.O.R.? <laughs> he knew Steve Irwin. Oh, okay, okay, okay. 
Right. Well, I said, yes, not far from BYO, but BYO's got 100 people <laughs> and Brisbane's got about 2 million. That's thank, the difference. Thank God for Steve Irwin who put his <laughs> land on the map. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's a good story. That's, I like a, that one. that's a factual one. A factual one. I'm, I've no doubt. I've heard similar people say the same sort of thing about uh, what Steve Irwin did for for uh, for, uh, for Queensland. Uh, just uh, an amazing I, a guy. I mean, I, I, I'm loath to cry, but I must admit, when I heard that he passed away, I did cry that day. Yeah. So, anyway, that's another story. So, with that, again, um, I'll just say, you know, we do have a lot of interesting stories, uh, and this one, um, this series of stories with Leo, uh, has been just brilliant. And again, Leo, it's Leo, thank you very much. Yeah. It, it, I'd hate to have to pay the time, the dollar value of the time that we've just taken up with this. Uh, it'll probably take my complete name. I thought you were going to be it. Yeah, I'll <laughs> uh, And with that, again, good morning and thank you very much for watching. Goodbye. Thank you.